Hey guys, CB Super. So I made another tool. It's called the CB Speed Lines. I see it a lot in like animes and whatnot, and I thought, you know, it'd be pretty cool to make my own. So if you guys are interested in, if you guys want to pick it up, it's absolutely free. Just go over to cbsuper.com, come down to the free tools for visual effects, and you'll see it down here on Speed Lines. All you got to do is click on this image, and it'll automatically start downloading. I also have some other tools here if you're interested. The Alpha Glow is pretty uh, popular. Heat Wave works pretty well. There's, of course, the Liquid Meld and Backgrounds tool for motion designs. Once you download this, it's going to download. It's going to be a dot settings file. You can go ahead and drop that into your macro folder. If you check down in the description of this video, I'll have a little blurb on where to find your macro folder if you're on a Mac or a PC. All right, let's go ahead and jump right into how to use the tool. This is the tool. Essentially, all it does is it creates these lines. Now, they can be white or they can be pretty much any color you want. Once you've loaded it into your macro folder, in order to bring it up, all you have to do is shift space and you can type in CB speed. It'll be the CB speed lines or CBS. All right, so let's look at this tool real quick. It's pretty simple. It starts off in its default position. It gives you all of these lines. Of course, whenever you press the space bar, it's gonna go ahead and start to animate. It is gonna run a little heavier. One thing I usually do whenever I'm working in particle systems, which this CB speed lines is actually based off of a particle system, is I'll come up to the playback and I drop it down from off in proxy mode down to quarter resolution. And that's gonna help you be able to actually chug through it a little bit. So when I press the space bar now, you'll see that it is animating. Obviously, the lines amount just gives you more or less lines. You can you can crank it all the way up to 25. It's going to give you a whole lot of lines. And if for whatever reason you need even more, all you have to do is double click on it and maybe you want to type in a number and that'll give you even more lines. Obviously, you can go really crazy with it over the top. So that's the lines amount. Um, next up is the lifespan. This is just how long or how many frames each one of these lines is gonna hold for. Right now I have it set on four. You can also drop this down all the way down to one and it's gonna be a lot faster. So it might be a little bit more speedy, a little bit more violent. It's kind of neat too. If you want to crank this all the way up, just be aware that the longer the hold, the more lines are gonna accumulate. This black BG is pretty self-explanatory. You turn it on if you wanna see the black background. You turn it off if you do not wanna see it. For coloring, you can color it whatever color you want. You have the option of just changing the color real simply. It's just built on a background, so you can change that color. It's pretty simple. Um, let me go ahead and show you just a really quick workflow of how you can use this. So here I have this image that I got off of Pixabay. It's just the toy of the Incredible Hulk. Um, obviously, I resized it, so it'd be in a 1920-1080 comp. And this is the CB speed lines. Once you load it in and you merge it on top of your object, you'll notice that it is, you know, covering over your object. If you don't want it to cover your object, then, you know, you can quickly just build a mask using the polygon tool. And you can plug it into the effect mask, which is the little gray triangle here on the top. And that'll allow you to mask out the actual speed lines. So now you see that the speed lines actually look like they're behind him versus on top of them. And even if you press play, the speed lines are always going to still be behind him, which is pretty cool. And you can still see through the gaps in, under his arms in here. Just as a little bit of extra, I instance this polygon mask over. I de-instance the soft edge, the invert, and the solid, and the border width. And that was allowing me to make a little white mask. And then I added an alpha glow to that and just colored it green. Gave him a little bit of glow. Just to give him a little bit of like radioactive power there. I mean, that's pretty much the end of the tool demonstration. If you guys are interested, I'll show you real quickly how I created the tool. I started off with a sprite. And the sprite is just a triangle mask. Uh, it's pretty thin, and then I loaded it into an emitter. Now, in the emitter, in order to make it receive a sprite, you're going to have to come over to the style, and you're going to have to change it to bitmap. I just adjusted the size and the size variance and whatnot so I can get different sizes over time. In the render, I went ahead and pre-rolled it by 100 frames. Other than that, there really hasn't been too much change. And then I fed it into a coordinate space node. Now, when you feed it into a coordinate space node, it essentially wraps whatever it is on your screen all the way around in a circle. Now, you have to make sure that it's polar to rectangular and not rectangular to polar because you'll get, you know, that, which looks weird. And then I just fed it through um, a few different backgrounds. Now, the cool thing about this and doing an array like this is that you can actually remove the sprite and just put in maybe like a little rectangle and you'll see that it gives us a much different array. So that's kind of interesting. I mean, you could definitely play around with this and do different things. 
I'll probably in the future just make a real quick tool just to make this a little bit easier for people if they were interested. You know, let me know in the comments if this is something that you'd be interested in to leave it open so where you can just plug in whatever sprite you want. Um, the only thing is that if there isn't a sprite loaded in there, then you're basically going to see nothing. So you do have to load some kind of sprite into the emitter. Otherwise, uh, there won't be a default sprite. If All right, so that's pretty much it. If you guys like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.